Good morning, everybody. It's good to see you. And uh, we are answering our one question this year that we've been answering all year, and that is, do I trust God? And this morning, uh, we are going to share another story of trust. And uh, I hope you're ready to um, just hear a great story because Brad and Heidi's story is pretty awesome. And uh, so we're sharing over this next couple weeks just individuals' stories of trust and how they trusted the Lord through significant moments in their life. And Brad has a particularly incredible one, uh, lots of miracles along the way and lots of cool things that God did. And so um, Brad, uh, this is Brad and Heidi, by the way, this is Brad and Heidi Rasmussen. Can we give him a hand? Woo! Yeah. And uh, Brad, Brad had an interesting moment on what was supposed to be just an average, really fun, great day, and uh, had, a, had a tough moment, and I'm going to let him share that with you and then begin to share, and mom's going to pipe in. So we have Brad's situation, and then have you ever had a situation where your kids went through a tough time and you dealt with it in a really tough way too? So Heidi's going to represent that. And so, uh, Brad, why don't you tell us what happened on what was supposed to be just a normal day? Uh, in June of 2017, uh, I was riding my road bike. Um, I'd been training for two and a half years to do a full Ironman. And uh, um, there was a student of mine, which is a weird story, but uh, that was racing back from bunkers to see how fast he could go back to Cheney. And he came around a corner. Um, and hit me at 70, um, and yeah, I, I ended up <clears throat> ended up rolling up the uh, hood of his car, and I got stuck in his windshield. And then he got scared because he couldn't see, and he swerved, and it threw me back into the road. And uh, the oncoming car hit my bike off my feet. Um, just so many things had to happen, correct? You know, 100% for me to survive and. Um, I, don't, I don't have any memory of that, of the first couple of days, uh, but I ended up breaking my pelvis, shattered my pelvis and my tailbone, broke my hip, broke my back in three places, had a brain injury, road rash, head to toe, stitches, head to toe, all that stuff. Tore your bladder? Yeah, tore my bladder in half, lost half of my blood, or a third of my blood, excuse me. Um, I woke up for about 15 seconds in the ambulance. Uh, they said, do you know who you are? I said, no. Do you know what you're doing? No. They said, do you know anything about who you are, what you're doing? And I said, I know that I'm married, so call my wife and don't let me die. And that was, and then I was out again. And uh, I don't remember anything until after surgery. Um, luckily, they were able to get a handful of surgeons uh, they didn't think my body could handle the stress of multiple surgeries. Um, and so they got everybody in at one time and were able to do multiple surgeries at once. And, and then it was on. It was game time. Uh, once I knew I wasn't going to die, uh, then it was, it was time to fight. And, uh, yeah, that's the Reader's Digest version of that day. <laughs> <laughs> that's the Reader's Digest version. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about um, after that day, you know, you, you made it through surgery, praise the Lord. Yep. And, uh, but it did not stop then no. at all. There were more physical things that happened. There were more mental things that happened. There were more spiritual things that happened. Tell us uh, a little bit about what it was like to trust the Lord and, and what that next season, that next year and the next couple years were like uh, just working through that. Um, the... It's so hard to explain. Um, I was so grateful to be alive, um, but that quickly wore off, if that makes sense. And you don't think that it would go away, that you'd be thankful to be alive, but for those initial months of recovery, I was ready to battle, and I was angry in a, in a good way. Like, yeah. I refused to let this beat me, um, and that worked out really well for me until it didn't. Right. And then yeah. everything kind of came crumbling down. And so the, the physical part was um, something I could handle. Uh, I could deal with the pain. I could, you know, 24-7, just excruciating pain. I lived in a hospital bed at my parents' house. Uh, I got out of, out of the hospital. I was out and home in 14 days, which was crazy. Yeah. Um, and so 
Uh, obviously, I was still in a rough spot, so then the, the battle began, and I went back to school and taught. I got hit on June 17th, and I went back to school on August 20th and taught from my wheelchair. I just was like, I refused to let it to let it get me down um, when I probably should have taken a step back <laughs> or two. And uh, I coached wrestling that year and a back brace and a wheelchair. It was just, I was so ready um, to fight and then it wore off. Um, and then I was angry, yeah. like for real angry. Um, and I had a bunch of medication issues that were messing with my brain chemistry and I just slowly started to spiral and we didn't know what was happening. We didn't know that I had a brain injury. We thought it was just concussion or depression or all of the above. And so by the time we kind of realized that we were in a different sort of fight, um, I was in a rough spot. Uh, I was not a good father, I was not a good husband or friend or son or any of those things. And uh, yeah, it was some dark times. Um, if it were not for the prayers of, I know many in this church, even though I wasn't a part of it, I was at Life Center at the time, but you guys rallied for me and my friends and my family uh, that it, I would not have, have been here. Uh, I would not be here. Um, so it was about four years of this darkness, this struggle. I had moments of clarity, you know, where I was like, okay, God, we got this. I can do this. And then I felt like every time I got a leg up on on this, something else would happen. And it just, you can only have those highs and lows for so long before you just refuse to get back up. Mm -hmm. And we got there a few times where I just had given up. I'm like, I'm not doing it anymore. Why? What's the purpose? My family and my community was desperate for me to rally. And there were so many times where I didn't even have the strength to pray. I just was like, this is my new reality, and I quit. Mm -hmm. And uh, slowly but surely, through a more series of miracles, uh, I found a doctor that was willing to treat me. I found a counselor that was willing to deal with my brain injury, and uh, just more prayer and more prayer and more prayer, and slowly but surely kind of made steps back to who I was, and um, yeah. So many tough moments, so many days of just, why? I'd lost everything. I lost my coaching, which is my life, right? It sounds goofy, but that's my identity, it was my coaching and my teaching. I couldn't do any of that. My outlet has always been working out. I couldn't do that. I couldn't be a father, couldn't handle stress, couldn't do it. I just was like ashamed and a shell of what I should be. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. How did you find strength from the Lord in those times? Oh, man. Um, most of the time, it wasn't by my own doing, I'll tell you that. Um, it seemed that when I was at my lowest, my friends and family in my church community knew that I needed it the most. And they just doubled down. They'd go to, to war for me every day. I had people... I was so fortunate. I had people that I never met that had seen my story on the Internet or whatever, and they would just go to battle every day and uh, uh, until I could kind of pull myself up a little bit and realize that that God was still with me and that there was a purpose behind my story. Um, but I depended on others for a long time, for a long time. Um, yeah. Yeah, good. Heidi, how was mom doing during this whole time? Well, as you can imagine, if you've ever gone through trauma, there's just, it's so mental. There is so much going yeah. on in your head. And I was, out, I was out shopping in the Valley Mall when I got the phone call from Holly, his wife, saying, Bradley got hit by a car. I have to take care of the kids. She was trying to meet up with Becca to, to watch the boys. And uh, can you go to the hospital? So I'm flying out of the Old Navy. and. <laughs> headed into town, and the whole time I'm just praying, Lord, give us wisdom. Trying not to crash, not to go too fast, but Lord, give us wisdom. Give the doctors wisdom. Give us as a, us as a family wisdom. I called Stephen, who was in Leavenworth on a motorcycle trip, and said, you might want to come home. 
And when Holly called, she said, I don't know any details. I don't know what condition he's in. I don't know what's happening. Um, just try to be there when he gets there. So I get to the hospital, he's not there. And they don't know anything about it. So I was there for a while and then Alec arrives and he knows the gal at reception and he went and talked to her and he, he's not here yet. And we're thinking, what does that mean? He's not here yet. You know, is he on his way? Is he, is, are they detouring to the coroner's office? You know, you, these things go through your mind when you're in trauma. And finally he got there and the first, when I got to see him, the first thing he said to me is, Mom, I don't wanna die. And I said, not today. Today's not your day. And it wasn't long before his emergency room was full of people. The entire worship team from Life Center was there. My kids were, my, my, our other son was there. Family friends were there, co-workers were there. Um, Stephen's doing 90 miles an hour down I-90, drafting on a semi-truck trying to get there. But I mean, it was full of people. And what do you do in that situation? You pray. That's what we were doing. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then people kicked in to work. What are we going to do in this situation? And we were assured that he would recover and be back to normal. They said six to 12 months. Why do they do that? Why do they tell you those things? Why do they give you a parameter when you don't know? Mm -hmm. The doctors don't know, we don't know. And so that, that plays on your mind. And, and I know him, and he's um, very competitive. And he's like, <laughs> um, I can beat that. If yeah. they tell me six months to a year, I can do better than that. If, if, if he's lifting weights with Alec, and Alec can lift 300 pounds, Bradley's going to lift 350 pounds. If they're going to run a race, he's going to push his self harder than anybody else. That's just who he is. So we thought, you know, the physical issues are going to get better and um, we're going to be fine. You know, and then and everybody started kicking them. My daughter-in-law and, and a very creative friend made these t-shirts for a fundraiser, has a picture of a bike on it and a cross and the verse uh, 2 Timothy 4, 7, I have run the, a good race, I have fought the fight and been found faithful. I think that's backwards, but you know what I mean. <laughs> um, and then Becca did a meal chain. I didn't even know what a meal chain was back then. And we had a, a colleague start a GoFundMe, and we had uh, people just coming out of the woodwork giving gift baskets and, and words of, you know, this big, huge poster board of words of encouragement and kindness yeah. and, and scripture and all these things that you just thought, this is, this is good. our process, we're, we're good to go. And physically, he did do, so, do some amazing things right away. The doctor said if he hadn't been in such great physical condition, he would not have survived the accident. And when he was in the hospital and been able to push himself from bed to wheelchair, they were stunned by that. You know, these things, and we're thinking, yes, we're on our way. And then, we had this series of misdiagnosis, uh, uh, um, missed medications that were wreaking havoc with him. Um, he was becoming a person that we didn't know. You know, when we had family get-togethers, it's like, what Bradley's going to show up this time? Because he could be scary. And um, there were promises from doctors that we're gonna do this and this and this and that none of that happened. And the other doctors that says, I can't help you, so let's not even bother. All of this just led to more and more discouragement on our part and depression and darkness on his part. And I have to tell you that I was concerned not just for Bradley's physical being, but his mental and spiritual and his family. I wanna tell you, he's married to a miraculous woman. She is the strongest, and so committed to this man. And um, there were times when she didn't, she wouldn't have had to been, and nobody would have blamed her. But because of her faith and because of who she is, she was faithful to him. And so we, came, we were in a battle for Bradley's mind, his, mm -hmm. his heart, his spirit, and all that. And 
In 2016, the year before his accident, I, I saw this movie. It was one of the Christian movies that, and you know, back then the quality of Christian movies was a little sketchy. Um, they were, they were, they might have had a good plot, but sometimes the execution was a little rough. But this movie, it's called The War Room. I don't know if anybody saw it. Yeah. Okay, I wasn't the only one. There's something that stuck with me about that movie, as, as kind of lame in some areas as it was. And I thought at that time, I can do more. And it was the whole, the, the basic premise was prayer warrior. You know, you, you can be a prayer warrior and, and make a difference. And I thought, I can take that to heart and I can, I can do that. And I, it didn't come about as every day or even every week, but you know, occasionally, and I tried doing the prayer closet thing, but Stephen Shoes and I are not compatible in a small area. <laughs> and um, so I moved out of the closet and came into our bedroom and just found my home was on my knees by my bed with a list before me of things that I knew needed to be prayed for. So when we started this journey with Bradley, I not only was compelled to pray, I had to pray. I had to. My heart was, when, when you go through stuff with your kids, there's a physical pain. And before this accident, the hardest thing I'd gone through as a parent was when my older son went into the military. And I cried for a couple days with that, but the difference was this went on for years. I had nowhere else to go. I, there was nothing, I'm a fixer. I can't fix this. Mm -hmm. I can't fix this. I can pray. And not just pray, but I can pray. And hopefully I can make a difference with God's grace. And um, as he declined, my prayers became more intense. And it became all the time. I was praying in my car. I was praying in my kitchen. I was praying at work. It was on your mind all the time. And um, I just felt like... Um, I cannot stop praying. I don't know what is going to happen. And there are times when my prayer was, Jesus, that's all I had. That's all I had. Or, better yet, this is why I'm here, I trust you. I don't understand you. I don't know what's going on, but I trust you. I had to. There was nothing else. There are no answers in doctors when you're in this situation. There are no answers. I mean, they can help you, but really, the answer is Jesus. And sometimes when that's all you can say, it's enough. Amen. And um, 10 months after his, diagnose, his, his accident, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Whew, that was tough. And before I knew what the outcome of my situation was going to be, I had to come to a place for myself. Do I trust God? Can I trust him? Yes. The Bible is replete with situations where God proved himself trustworthy. Can I trust God? Can, that meaning, can I let go and, and, mm -hmm. and really trust him? Do I trust him? And the answer came back to me, yes, I really do. I, 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 I have learned through a lifetime of truth being put into me where the answer is and where my hope is. And I was following scriptural mandates to pray. The Bible tells us, come boldly. Yes. Who do, I'm nobody. God is God. And he tells me to come boldly before the throne. I had to. But I could. That was the great thing, is he allows me to do that. He tells me to do that. Um, there was a song that just came out right around my diagnosis, and it's by Mercy Me. It's called Even If. Even if, for me, what if I don't make it? What if this cancer is going to take me? I will still trust you. I will still believe in you. You are still my answer, even if I don't make it. It was a little harder for me to pray that when it was my, my son. But I came to that point where I could, even if. 
There were songs and scriptures that spoke to me on a regular daily basis constantly. Scriptures that I'd known my whole life, new ones that just came across my path. And there's this one that I hope you all would memorize because it encompasses everything we needed at that time. May the God of hope yeah. fill you with all <laughs> joy and peace. Here's the caveat though, as you trust in him, do you? Can you? And then you will overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. That scripture changed my life. By the way, that's our Christmas theme scripture. <laughs> Didn't know that till just now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Go ahead. So, so I got through my issue. Bradley was still in a downward spiral. It was dark. It was hard. It was heartbreaking. You don't want to watch your kids go through that. And I know that there are people out there that have gone through way worse than we did. Maybe some of you are going through something right now that you can't even wrap your head around. You're not alone. We're nobody special. We didn't, we're no great spiritual authorities or warriors. <laughs> but God met us mm. all the time. If the situation had turned out differently, would we still have that same faith? Would we still feel the same way? I honestly believe we would. It would have been a little harder to get there, but I honestly believe because of the foundation that we have in our lives of these scriptures and these songs that just, that just well up within you and speak to you, they speak truth to you. Yeah. You can't do it on your own, don't even try. I'll be available. If you want somebody to pray with you, if you want somebody to pray for you every day, I will do that for you. Because like Bradley says, there's days when you can't do it yourself. Yeah. You can't. You just can't. And the, the, one of the things I learned that, about God that's so wonderful is be honest with him. Yeah. He already knows anyway. Yeah. He knows how you feel. He knows that you're angry. He knows you're frustrated. He knows you're sad. He knows you're overwhelmed. Tell him. He's not bothered by that. He's not surprised by that. And he's not afraid of that. He mm -hmm. wants to be there for you. And he wants you to know that he's there for you. So when, we, when I had those moments of complete desperation, I got to a point where I said, OK, this is going to get serious. Every Tuesday night, I fasted and prayed, mostly for him, but for other things. Our son, our older son was injured at work and had surgery and was going through stuff and my stuff and friends stuff. You know, there's still things that are going on outside of that realm, but mm -hmm. most of it was for him. And um, I just can't tell you how many times God met me in an amazing, amazing way. And I just feel that so much of it was because I had a foundation for my, I was born on a Tuesday, I was in church on Sunday, and I've been there for 64 years. Very, not missing very many, honestly. <laughs> Back in the day when you went to church Sunday morning for Sunday school, you had church service, you went Sunday night, you went Wednesday night, and if you had choir, you had choir, and if you were involved in something else, you had, some, you know, we were there all the time. That sounds good. A, a lot of y'all don't even know what that means. You know, Sunday night church, really? Yeah. You. <laughs> but there was a foundation of from the cradle to youth group. We used to have prayer times on Sunday night afterwards, and we had parents who would come stand over us with their hands on us and pray over us mm -hmm. a lot of times. And that made a difference in, in our lives. Don't you think, Stephen? I think that yeah. Yeah. that puts something in us that we will, we will never good. forget. So I guess so our, let, our journey's not over. Yeah, it's not over. Let's, let's start there. It's not over. It's not over. So um, Brad and Heidi and their family and everybody, you know, they, they kind of get to a place where Brad's got some better diagnosis, uh, medicine's better, counseling's better. You, you can see him, he's, he's doing better. Um, and then I popped this question for the year. Do I trust God? 
<laughs> it's not over. And summer hits, and Brad gets to trust God all over again. Yeah. Tell us that story. Well, uh, the goal, even after the first accident, or the accident, was to get back to doing Iron Man. Like, that never, there was times where I'm like, there's no way I'm going to do it. But year by year, worked my way back, and finally this last summer, I thought I could compete in a half Iron Man. And so I'd been training for a long time, and, uh, you know, riding the bike on the street was tough, uh, mentally, for sure, but found ways to do it, had good friends, all that. And then we get to race day, and I get through the first 30, 27 miles, and the guy in front of me gets hit by a truck on his bike. And uh, they stop the race, and I have to sit next to him, and he's screaming bloody murder, and they have to ambulance and put him on a back brace, and <sighs> again. And uh, it was just all I could do to get on my bike and f finish that stupid race. Uh, it was one of the most difficult days. Um, and I, I came home and I'm like, I'm not riding my bike ever again. I will not touch it. Uh, so I, I just, um, it rocked me for yeah. sure. And uh, I was obviously thankful that it wasn't me, but it just, brings it right back in to focus and all of those little things that you thought you'd overcome, all those little baby steps, all those little mental hurdles that you deal with and you kind of push them back and find a way to survive and then they just smack you in the face again. And uh, it's been not as not nearly as rough a go this time around, you know, because I, I wasn't hit, but it's been, it's been a rough go. Uh, it's been a lot harder to handle mentally than I thought it would be. Um, here we are again grinding through, uh, people praying, and, and uh, yeah. Yeah. What, what were some of the ways uh, this summer when you saw that gentleman get hit and then you had to get on your bike, and you were telling me like every pedal was like yeah. the most strenuous, most difficult thing. What were some of the things that you realized the Lord had done in you and in your family and the ways that you had grown as you've been processing that and thinking about that? Um, you... You battle between being so thankful and grateful for the place that I was in, like to be able to be back in a position where I could compete for a you know a six-hour race like that. I was so thankful. Uh, the journey, you know, the journey is stuck in your brain the entire way. The big moments you think about, and the bad moments, and um, I just kind of finally came to this acceptance of I don't I don't know I just. I was so happy uh, to be where I was, yet I was still so salty. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. It's this dichotomy of gratefulness and bitterness at the same time. And there's like this constant battle between those two. And uh, some days we're very grateful, and some days we're, we struggle with that a little bit. Yeah. Um, I've ne to be honest, I never doubted that God was with me throughout all, even when in my darkest, I never doubted that he was there. I never doubted that he loved me, but I just didn't think it was fair. And I couldn't figure out why I had to go through this. And it didn't seem to matter what I was doing. It just never got better. And uh, um, yeah, it was at those moments that people came to fight for me. People battled for me till I could fight for myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, So trust is an ongoing thing. Oh boy. Yeah, it literally is a daily struggle. Um, I still have brain issues and medication issues, and, and uh, every single day is a fight for... Um, I definitely i am a firm believer in spiritual warfare, and uh, there's, there's a fight yeah. all the time. And uh, I feel like I'm, I'm conscious of it, I'm sensitive to it, and uh, those days... I just have to trust that they're my little prayer warriors are surrounding yeah. me. And, and you even had a little fight this week. Oh my gosh, yeah. Uh, I just got super sick. Um, I, there's been opportunities after the accident where I've had moments at church like this where I've had something to do that's been potentially powerful. 
and those weeks are the worst. Yeah. Every I wanted to cancel this so many times this week. I felt like death. I got I had to go to the hospital on Thursday. I just have been hammered, and I wanted to just call it off. But there's something in in me that knows that somebody in here is struggling, and if I can help, if there's some part of my story that they can latch onto before it's too late, then that's why we're here. Yeah. And uh, so even when the enemy tries to silence our voice, he can't. Correct. Amen. Yeah. 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 So we've learned a couple things, haven't we? Prayer's pretty important, right? Community's pretty important. All of those add to our trust and to our ability to trust and, our, and help us focus on trusting the Lord. And uh, you can see that Brad and Heidi, they're, I mean, they're still in it, <laughs> even as soon as Thursday, when the enemy was saying, I'm going to bring all this to your attention right now. I'm going to bring all of this to your mind right now as you go back to the hospital over a flu or a cold or something, but I'm going to bring it all back because I don't want you to share on Sunday. I don't want you to live for Jesus in a powerful way. I don't want you to follow me. I don't want you to trust me. I want to continue to, to make it difficult for you to trust me. And, um, and here you are. We were texting back and forth this week and I'm like, nah, no way. You're a wrestler. You don't get a break. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I was a basketball player, so I went to a wrestling practice once, and I said, yeah, right, I ain't ever doing that again. <laughs> we had a respect for wrestlers. Um, but what, what's interesting here is you guys have a really big, powerful trust story in God. And what's interesting is it's not, it's not over. Like... This summer is a way that God's taken you deeper. This week, God's taken you deeper. And how many of us know that's what God's done? He does that. Because uh, he's, he's not finished with us. And every single step is that moment of deeper and deeper and deeper healing for us as we trust him. But what's interesting too, as soon as we, as soon as we say, uh, I'm out of the process, I'm not going to trust it just gets really, really difficult and hard, and life takes an even worse spin. And so um, just to sum things up, either of you, what, what would you say about trust today that is something you're really working through on a daily basis? Um, from my perspective, I would say that it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to doubt your trust, to not feel like, to just not be able to at times. You know, God still knows you love him. He knows your heart. He knows that you're in the fire. Um, sometimes it's hard to accept that, and it's hard to give yourself a little bit of grace. Mm -hmm. And so when you're in those really, really deep valleys, uh, it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to, to not be okay and until you can. Yeah. Heidi? That's that's a that's a hard one for me because this was not God's doing. I don't believe that God caused his accident. I don't believe God God causes cancer. I don't believe that God causes divorce. But I know He can be in that battle with us regardless of mm -hmm. what. It's not his plan A. His plan A was Eden and everything hunky dory and. It's not that way. And the bottom line is relationship. He wants a relationship with you. He's not a vending machine. You don't put a prayer in and you get an answer back. He wants a relationship with you. And that relationship is what takes you through all of this. That's where your trust comes from. That's where your faith comes from. That's where your hope comes from. And when you can't do it yourself, there are people that'll do it for you. And that's what like he said, community is all about. And one thing I really appreciate about this church, I, I texted or called Pastor on, on Thursday and told him Bradley was going to emergency and things were not good. And I, and I told him, it, this is a spiritual battle. And he's on it. And he, he, he understands that. And I haven't had a pastor that I could call and do that for a, a very long time. I cannot tell you how much that means to us. I cannot tell you how much it meant for this church to pray for us. You didn't know us. 
And for me to be able to sit here and say thank you, you have no idea what that did for us and for our family and for this man and for you know, others that are, you can do the same thing for others that are hurting. Thank you so, so much. But that it's that relationship that gets you through those times. Yeah, that's right. Thank you guys. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story. We, um, we really appreciate it because um, one of the things that I think is powerful about stories like this is we can relate in one way or another, can't we? Yeah. Like we all can relate to this story. We all have found our, ourselves in a downward spiral at some point or another and just saying, God, what's going on? What are you doing? How are you helping? I need you right now. And, um, and so I, I thank you so much for sharing your story. And um, I wonder if you would be able to pray for us. Um, I'm asking him, by the way, we've already kind of talked about this. This is a big step of trust for him <laughs> uh, because these are hard things, um, which another big step of trust that I'm really excited about is, um, as most of you know, Karen is pregnant and will be going on maternity leave. And I told Brad, you're up. <laughs> So he's going to start leading us in worship too. So, uh, yeah, another, just another big step of trust. And um, all I can do is be faithful as a pastor. Um, I feel like I'm, as I, as I pursue any of you or as our staff pursues any of you, actually Troy and Alyssa asked you to take a step of trust this morning. Would you trust God with the youth of our generation to say yes to them? To say yes to serving them and helping them and training them and being there for them. Those are all steps of trust for us where we say, I'm going to serve. I'm going to pray. I'm going to be in community instead of out of community because that's what trusting the Lord is like. We do that together. We do it individually in our own prayer closet. We do it corporately together as a body of Christ. So uh, I'm going to ask Brad to pray for us, but... Before we do, um, I'm, I'm guessing that some of you in the room, like this story hits your heart. And not just because of Brad's story, because maybe it's familiar to something you're going through or you have gone through. And you're at the exact same spot where Brad and Heidi and their family are too, which is, uh, I'm just, I just still need to trust the Lord in the middle of this. In the middle of your story, in the middle of their story, in the middle of my story, I have a story of trust right now. I'm, I'm trusting the Lord, and maybe you're there right now too. And uh, I'm just going to ask you just, just to respond to the Holy Spirit um, in this moment. And if you're, if you're where they're at, and you would just say, that's where I'm in. I, I have a moment where I'm trusting the Lord in. Uh, there's something deep. There's something powerful. And I want to trust him even more. Uh, would you just raise your hand and say, Lord, that's where I'm at. Great. Love to see your hands. Good. All right. Brad, could you, uh -huh. could you pray for us? I can. And, uh. Uh, all right. First of all, God, thank you for this church um, and the community that they are. Thank you for the, their willingness to just wrap all of us in your love and surround us with your, your armor and to go to battle for those that they don't even know. Uh, I am so grateful for that, and I know many others in this community are. So thank you for that first. Um, we ask for strength and courage when there's just not a whole lot there, um, whether sickness or addiction or there's just so many tough things right now that we have to battle with. Uh, we pray for peace and understanding even through what we don't deserve. Um, I pray for those that are struggling right now to find community, to reach out to their friends and their families, to ask for, for intercession uh, through prayer on their behalf. We just, I pray that we just find a way, mm -hmm. to find a way through another day. And uh, we know that you're there. We do trust you, even when we can't tell you, we do. And uh, we love you, even through the darkest days. And we appreciate 
everything, every blessing that you've given us and just continue to watch over us. We thank you for everything that you are. Amen. 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 Give my hand. Well, thanks so much for sharing your story. Um, it's a good one and um, a good example of just trusting the Lord in the middle of something. Um, well, we, we kind of talked about where we would be with time when we got done with this. So the good news is uh, I've written my message for next week. <laughs> So uh, I'm excited about Sorry, that. I told no, you I was that's, verbal. That's exactly good, yeah. That's, that's exactly what we wanted to happen. So um, I'll have a message for next week that will actually be a, a coattail of their story. So um, I hope you come back next week and uh, just be a part of what we're doing here at Cheney Faith Center. I do want to say this. If, if, you're, if you just feel like I just, need, I just need a little bit more this morning and you'd like someone to pray for you, um, Heidi and Brad both said that one of the most important things is that people were praying for us. People were praying for me. Yeah. So if there's something that you need and uh, you just need a little bit of an extra special touch and you need someone to pray for you, um, we'll have a couple people up here to pray with people and uh, maybe even Brad and Heidi would stay and pray for people. And, um, and if there's just something that you just want to say, hey, I'd, I'd love to get a little bit more prayer this morning, would you please stay? And just come on up while we dismiss. You can just come up and receive prayer this morning. All right? Great to have you this morning. Always remember, Jesus loves you very much. So do Kate and I. Have a great week.